This is the X-47B, and it has just accomplished one of the most impressive feats of the U.S. military to date. After being in development for over a decade, it wasn't clear if the project would ever truly get off the ground. However, the X-47B, originally designed by Northrop Grumman to be the world's first fully autonomous fighter jet, just achieved a huge milestone that is bringing it back to the forefront of naval warfare again. So, what happened that revived this decade-old program, and what does it mean for the future of naval aviation? Back in 2000, the Navy knew that despite the Internet being in its infancy, the way of the future was going to be autonomous machines controlled by advanced computers. Because of this, Navy officials reached out to captains of the defense industry, including Boeing, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, as well as several others, to come up with prototypes for this program that would truly catapult the U.S. Navy into the future. They called the program Unmanned Combat Aerial Systems, or UCAS. The basic premise of the program was simple, or at least everyone thought. The final product would need to be integrated into current and future U.S. Navy aircraft carriers, be capable of carrying ordnance and a variety of onboard sensors, have the ability to refuel in the air, and take off and land on carriers. With those project goals in mind, Northrop Grumman went about designing what they later dubbed the X-47B. During those initial years, the X-47B was actually the most promising test aircraft among all the defense contractors. Because of this, the Navy helped fast-track its development, and by 2011, the X-47B had taken its first flight out of Edwards Air Force Base in California. After a successful first flight, the Navy conducted at-sea deck testing with the X-47B on board the USS Harry S. Truman in 2012. These tests were a roaring success, with the X-47B able to integrate with all carrier communication suites and data links, fit inside the hangars, traverse the deck, and perform other vital evolutions. Once cleared for carrier operations, the X-47B made history in May 2013 when it became the first drone ever in military history to take off from the deck of a U.S. aircraft carrier. After successfully taking off from a carrier, the X-47B overcame additional operational challenges until it faced its biggest test yet. That summer, the drone made history once again when it performed the first ever arrest landing of a drone at sea on board the USS George H.W. Bush. These initial tests made Navy leadership ecstatic and as a result, fast-tracked the X-47B on a trajectory towards initial operational capability. The X-47B continued soaring past its milestones by successfully completing a variety of complex evolutions, including night flight operations, operations in conjunction with manned aircraft, and in-flight refueling. With each of these tests adding another notch to its belt, the X-47B seemed well on its way to being the first fully operational autonomous jet fighter. But there was just one problem. By 2017, the Unmanned Combat Aerial System program was billions of dollars over budget and still had yet to finish a fully operational design. With funding seemingly on the rocks, plans were being made to transfer both X-47B prototypes to aircraft museums, never to take flight again. However, after a higher level review, it was decided to keep the X-47B because it was to take on the autonomous fighter role while other drones, like the MQ-25 Stingray, were to take on the role of aerial refueling. With this impressive history, what recent developments make the X-47B a game changer? How exactly the X-47B has been upgraded to outperform its predecessors is not necessarily in the design itself, but in what is inside controlling it. While the overall design, weapon systems and sensors on the X-47B and other UCAS drones need to be great, the advanced AI computers inside are what really make these drones special. For the X-47B, and the other drones for that matter, one of the hardest parts of the system to correct was the takeoff and landing on aircraft carriers. But why was this so hard? Unlike traditional runways, which are flat, static, and long, aircraft carrier runways are the exact opposite. With sea forces like pitch, roll, and yaw making the deck unsteady, it is very difficult to teach a human pilot, much less a robot, how to interpret these forces when coming in for a landing. Additionally, with the runway being so much shorter, fixed-wing aircraft that land on carriers have to catch what is called an arresting wire. Strung along the deck, these three wires are at different intervals, and an approaching pilot needs to catch just one with their tailhook. Failure to do so means aborting the landing and trying again. 
Again, this maneuver is incredibly difficult and takes a human pilot years to learn and many more to perfect. Trying to get a robot to do this is kind of like teaching a toddler to walk a high balance beam with their eyes closed. It's probably not doable and very dangerous. Because of this, in years past, the X-47B would have to take off and land with a human operator actually controlling the aircraft from the carrier. So, how did this change? Recent testing at sea has shown that Northrop Grumman engineers have perfected the AI computers on board to do the unthinkable. In February of this year, the X-47B made history once again by being the first drone to autonomously take off and land on an aircraft carrier completely on its own with no human intervention. This development is absolutely huge, and its accomplishments cannot be understated. Now, with the ability to take off, conduct missions, and land on its own, the X-47B is really on its way to complete its testing after so many years of setbacks and budget cuts. This advanced capability sets the stage for getting where the drone is meant to be, in combat. What makes the X-47B the ultimate tool in modern warfare? In order to fit into the tight confines of an aircraft carrier, the X-47B needs to fit certain parameters. At 38 feet long, 62 feet wide, and 10.4 feet tall, the drone is small enough to get into cramped aircraft hangars, right? Well, not exactly. In order to fit inside a hangar bay, its wings can fold down to a length of 31 feet while stowed for sea. As for ensuring it can take off, with its max takeoff weight of 44,577 pounds, the aircraft can carry a ton of fuel and ordnance to carry out its combat missions. But to propel all of this, the X-47B needs a powerful engine. This is accomplished through a single Pratt & Whitney F100-220U turbofan engine. This engine allows the X-47B to travel at speeds of 0.92 Mach, just below the speed of sound. On top of that, the X-47B has a very high service ceiling for a drone at 42,000 feet, which will enable it to engage a wide range of enemy aircraft. But what can it do once airborne? After takeoff, the X-47B can carry up to 4,500 pounds of ordnance in the form of two Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAM, bombs. During its flight, the X-47B can aerially refuel from other aircraft, making its 3,900-kilometer range basically limited only by how long the operator wants the drone up in the air. But what really sets it apart is its wide array of sensors. While the exact types, quantities, and capabilities of the sensors on board the X-47B remain classified, we do know a general idea of its capabilities, and it's a lot. First, the drone can serve as an advanced intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance platform with its wide range of electro-optical and infrared cameras on board. In addition, the drone comes standard with synthetic aperture radar that allows it to distinguish ships, aircraft, and other targets from huge distances. In addition, the drone has several ground-moving target indicators as well as aerial-moving target indicators. This means that no matter what the target is, whether a ship, aircraft, tank, truck, or vehicle, the X-47B can detect, track, target, and engage almost anything at once. And that is not all it can do. Recent media reports have shown that the X-47B is also armed with an advanced passive and potentially active electronic warfare suite. While the exact capabilities are unknown, the X-47B can at least detect enemy electromagnetic signals and potentially even jam them. But how does the X-47B compare to other prototypes in the program, like the MQ-25 Stingray? After the 2016-2017 restructuring of the UCAS program, the Navy moved away from a one-size-fits-all approach to the drones and instead wanted each drone to be dedicated to its own mission. While the physical dimensions and the flight performance of the MQ-25 Stingray and X-47B are almost identical, the purpose of each one, along with the corresponding AI and sensors, are completely different. This is because the MQ-25 is intended to be a dedicated aerial refueling platform and the X-47B is meant to operate in tandem with fighter aircrafts. But despite all the current and future capabilities, does the X-47B really have a place in carrier air wings of the future? The X-47B is critical to naval operations for a few reasons. The first is that the drone is a huge force multiplier. Because fighter pilots take years and years of training to become proficient in their craft, losing even one, much less dozens, in a pair-to-pair -pair conflict would have a huge impact on the Navy and create a problem that can't be fixed overnight. 
Another way the drone preserves human capital is to basically be like a sacrificial lamb in combat. When naval aviators are preparing the battle space, one of the first and most dangerous things they need to do is suppress enemy air defenses. Air lanes can be established once enemy radar, missile, and anti-aircraft artillery sites have been knocked out, and friendly fighters can pass safely to the battle space and engage in aerial combat or ground attack. Because the Navy could have this drone available, they could be the first ones thrown into the fire during the most precarious part of the battle. In addition to saving human lives, the X-47B can greatly expand the knowledge of the air and space domain around a carrier strike group. Naval commanders build this common maritime and air picture mainly using the E-2D Hawkeye. However, there are only so many Hawkeyes available, and losing even one is a huge deal to a strike group. By incorporating the X-47B to work in concert with the Hawkeye, Navy commanders can keep the Hawkeyes at a safe standoff distance or potentially ground them together to send up the X-47B instead. Perhaps the best way that the X-47B can be used is for aerial combat. While currently armed with just ground attack munitions, Navy leadership still desires that the X-47B can one day have air-to-air -air missiles to fight shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with F-18s and other fighter aircraft. However, at least now, the day that enemy fighters get downed by a drone is still a good way into the future. Bye for now.